Good morning, everyone. This is Jim Chastain with Easy Power. This is uh, our weekly refresher episode, 30-minute session reviewing specific topics in Easy Power for tool users. And uh, this is a fourth in uh, in a row now where we've amplified specific capabilities in the Power Protector module, you know, specifically manipulating the TCC plots. And by dividing this uh, subject up into bite-sized pieces, we're able to get into more for uh, more detail. I invite you to uh, send in questions via the chat or question box here on the webinar or emails afterwards. And, uh, and in any case, to make sure that we have the audio set up correctly, send me a quick note to make sure that the audio is working from your end. So the thing we're going to be talking about to, uh, so far has been uh, part one. And these, these are all on the website for review. So you can go in to the easypower.com recorded um, training webinars and review each of these at your leisure. But part one was the introduction and the basics of Power Protector. Part two, we covered sequence of events curves for each system element, what the TCC curves look like, and how they're tied to the data device block and can be modified accordingly. Last week we went into uh, details on short circuit calculations and how the curves are tied to the results there, specifically how to plot a bolted fault tick currents, arc fault tick currents, and then uh, be able to utilize these indicators for momentary interrupting and 30 cycle faults. There was one question at the end of the episode that I I answered correctly but then again it could be looked at from a different point of view so I want to kind of readdress that one specifically can you display both 85 percent and 100 percent interrupting currents um, at the same time on the curve and so that's where I'm going to start today and the advantage is it'll give me a real quick uh, review of what this topic was last week. And uh, specifically, when we plot on the, uh, the TCC curves, we have a lot of capabilities by right-clicking on the curve itself. That allows us to put the arcing fault current tick mark. And then we can use custom tick marks um, to amplify this particular capability. And then what we'll be modifying then today is show, show how to shift the curve and then go back to the original curve. So real quickly, let me jump into the tools. And uh, we'll come back to my agenda here in a few minutes. So what we have here is a very simplistic uh, one-line diagram. And as we go in, we've, uh, we've created all the elements with the device editor. And the first step in any kind of coordination is to calculate the short circuit results. And as we do this, we can see that, and in fact, here I've, I've calculated the incident energy. When I go in and look at my arc flash hazard spreadsheet by arranging for arc flash icon at the top, this shows me for bus 3 that we're calculating, calculating results using the fuse. And a couple things are worthy of note here as we kind of look at the chart. First of all, we see a different color for the bus arc fault current and the trip time, which indicate that um, these particular times are the result of applying the 85% calculation versus anything that's in black type, which means that the arc current, the uh, most restrictive arc current was 100% time calculation. Secondly, we notice that by looking at bus 3, because it's protected by FS1, for some reason BL1 is not in the circuit because FS1 is up here as part of our main protection. So we got a couple things wrong with this, and in terms of coordination, we don't want to start making adjustments here at BL1 if it's really not being applied in the circuit for the calculations. 
So as I go to the coordination module, I'm going to expand my window again, highlight this particular leg, go into coordination module and plot, and as I do that, it becomes pretty obvious what, what the results were telling us before, that our arc flash calculations are being controlled, if you will, by the settings of the fuse or the size of the fuse. Now, in terms of putting in a tick mark for bolted uh, for the arc current, the procedure is highlight a bus, fault the bus, and then for that protective device, right-click on the curve, and then insert the arcing current tick mark. But as I do this, it says it cannot calculate the arcing current for this device, and that is because the fuse is being currently used as the most restrictive item. So again, by doing that, I should be able to insert the arcing tick mark here. And as I right-click on the fuse, you can see now it, it has inserted this triangular arcing current. And indeed, it's telling me the 85% current produces the most restrictive time in, in terms of uh, incident energy. So just by looking at the chart, you can see, and if I look down here at the, at the base, as I move my cursor around, you can see that we're probably using a four, 48 millisecond trip time for the clearance of, this, of the uh, fuse when we're calculating our arc flash incident energy. Okay, so now in terms of, of how to kind of mitigate this or deal with it, uh, clearly the fuse is going to have to be changed and the tool allows us to, well, if you will, approximate what a better selection of fuse might be. So for starters, I don't want it to be the, the protective, the primary protective element. And as I move the fuse out of the way, and so I'm physically dragging it around where it started in this particular area. In fact, if I right click and show the original curve, you can see that this is where we started off. As I pull it up out of the way, I'm not making an adjustment on the fuse. What I'm actually uh, locating is other values in the particular family and type of fuse that AB Chance uh, catalog allows us. So again, this is not the way to design a fuse setting, but it does allow me to say, okay, if I picked a fuse of size 30, then the performance overlap would be as we're showing here. Okay, once I'm able to do this now, I can go in, I can see that, that the uh, BL1 arc trip point is now indicated on my curve and it too is showing 85 percent as far as the, uh, the calculation of res most restrictive time. So the question that I, I misanswered last time was is there a way to show both the 85 percent arcing current and the 100 percent arcing current at the same time? So the reason that we, we want to talk about this and the reason that the IEEE regulations inspire us to compare both the 85% trip point and the 100% trip point is illustrated by exactly the way this breaker is set up. If, if we were to, if for whatever reason, the uh, parameters of the arc and the resistance were such that the actual current was not at 100%, but it was actually at 85% of, of what the calculations represent, the actual clearing time of this particular breaker could be as slow as, and we get up here and look, 150 milliseconds, um, even though the breaker itself might start to pick up quite a bit quicker, the manufacturer doesn't guarantee it to completely clear until it reaches this point on the curve, which is 156 or 157, 158 milliseconds. All right. What I want to do is now create my own uh, a second, a second tick mark and I'm going to get rid of this one by selecting it. So this is a tick mark for the asymmetrical fuse fault current. So I'm going to delete this. Here's BL1. And as I hover over here, this tells me it's BL1 asymmetrical momentary current. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that just to kind of remove the clutter. What I want to do is create a new tick mark. And I want it to be at the same value as my 85% indicated here, so it's going to be 
and let's make it symmetrical and let's say OK. So now what we see is here's the 85% arcing current. Now as I come back and make uh, or at least look at what a new setting on the breaker might allow us, and again the tool allows me to click and drag to a different setting on the uh, trip device. Here I went from instantaneous of 1.5 to an instantaneous of 2. This is allowing me to show now that the my 85% point is still at 9552, but now the calculations that are being used by IEEE equations as far as easy power is concerned is actually the 100% arcing current, which is 11.2. 238 thousand amps and so the manufacturer guarantees the breaker to clear in that case at a much more respectable 25 milliseconds which is considerably better than what we were looking at when we're when the breaker was set in this range and the effective uh, calculations we used were the 85 percent uh, set point okay so the answer is yes you can display both but you have to use a, uh, if you will, a custom tick mark as one of the values, and then as you adjust the curve, you can see what changes in calculations along the way. Okay, that was kind of fun. All right, uh, next thing we want to demonstrate is how to save uh, the plots and keep them with the file, and then actually print them out with and without the one line diagram. I'm also going to go through setting up a ground fault curve and then compare it against um, what a new curve or an alternative device might produce as far as protective uh, parameters on the same curve. So let's, as I kind of go into this mode, I'm going to go ahead and do a, let's save this, store as. So once I've produced a uh, TC uh, result or plot that I'm happy with, I can save as, store as, and let's say uh, this is going to be a new fuse plot. And so I'll save that and close this particular TCC. Next thing I want to do is look at this particular leg on my one line and make sure I have the ability to observe and plot ground fault uh, trips at the same time. So I've highlighted the elements on my one line. We're going to plot a new TCC. And the first thing that you, well, I kind of go back and look at the elements in the system first. So go back to my database editor. Let's go ahead and save what I've done. And what I'm looking at are the characteristics of each of the, the breakers. So I've intentionally set them up as the same type of breaker I've just co copied and pasted from one to the other. The difference being in the ability to do a ground trip function. So to be able to invoke that in my TC plot, uh, I want to check this check mark and then set up what the ground fault settings would be. And the one upstream, in this case, I'm going to set with a higher um, delay so that it will trip sec later and then the one that's downstream where I'm expecting the fault or potential fault uh, for protection I set it up with plot the TC curve and let's set it up with quicker settings and so let's set it point mo point 0.5 on my uh, selection and a minimum delay so now as I do that, I can come back and then plot the coordination curve. And one of the first things you would say as well, that looks just like the uh, phase overcurrent. And you would be correct as far as your observation. What we're looking at, and again, the, the tool, the um, Power Protector module gives us the ability to invoke the short circuit settings or modify them as well as what's required to change the settings temporarily on the, the breakers. 
So what we're looking at here is actually still a three-phase fault with momentary current as the calculations. So if I were to go fault the bus, what I'm actually indicating here is still uh, balanced three-phase fault at the half-cycle point. What I want to display is the ability to go in, and you can see from this indication we're plotting the phase coordination. If I pull down on this little uh, indicator box under the icon, I can view ground coordination or both. So let's go and look at ground coordination by itself. And here we'll see the results of the set points that we had just uh, modified with the database editor. Come back over here, fault the bus. Now we're looking at half phase or a half cycle calculation momentary current, but this time aligned to ground fault. And what we're seeing is 12,400 amps for ground current, and that this is the way that the, uh, the breakers are set up. And if for some reason I wanted to make modifications with uh, BL3, maybe having settings closer to BL2, I could modify one or the other and get the same results in terms of my coordination. Then as I, and so I can do the same thing with faulting this other bus. If I fault this bus, you can see that it, it actually, the only bus in the circuit, the only breaker in the circuit would be L2. And so its higher settings will override where the trip point is. Okay, as a result of these calculations, now I'm gonna fault the bus again and it, it dropped back to my settings on BL3. I may want to add a note. In this case, let's say that this particular uh, set point was, is required for some particular piece of equipment, and it may not be. So we need this for the motors in, uh, in the pump house and be able to save this particular TC curve, so we're going to store it, and let's call this from the pump house, and consequently now this this TC curve will be carried with um, with the file. Likewise, if I want to look at one of the curves I've created in the past, I might. In fact, this is the one we just saved. I might open up. Um, and compare the results that we've done previously with the same one-line diagram. Okay, so this allows us to set up a, a ground fault curve. We can coordinate and show both the phase coordination and ground coordination uh, to do this. And And so we want to save those with the curves as we go through it. Okay, so any questions about that? We just set up a ground fault curve, and we saved, and we're able to, so printing out the TC with the one line is, is fairly simplistic. Uh, back on the case of the phase coordination between the fuse and the, uh, the upstream or downstream breaker, have the ability to select both, create a difference calculator, and now we might want to compare the trip current or the uh, separation between the two protective devices at both the 100% or the 85% point, both of which would be good to know, and save this information in, in terms of a report. Um, printing out, we, we can format the TCC and and change the elements, including the colors, the, the size of the, uh, the plots, whether they're opaque or trans semi-transparent, so you can see devices behind them. We can change the scale on the, uh, in terms of what voltage is the reference point, and then we can change the text on the, 
on the graph itself. And then once we go to print that, uh, in this case I'll just let's print all three TCCs along with it. And um, I'll print these in a, a PDF form so we can find them. And it's hicked up, hicked up on me because I don't want a new version. And so here's what the report looks like. So it's given me all three because I asked for all three. And it's going to keep giving them to me. All right, so here's our one-line diagram. Our TC curve with the annotation and the and the different separation that we were indicating on the. Obviously, you can you can modify the uh, title block and have your own logos and whatever text you want in the file. Okay, that brings us to oh, putting a putting a new device or comparative uh, device on the the diagram even though we haven't put the device in the system. So let's kind of go back to our one line diagram and not save, uh, not modify any of the changes we've made. All right, let's say in this particular case we have a fuse that may or may, or may not be up to the task that we've, we've allotted it as far as protecting transformers and coordinating with downstream devices. So the question might be what if I wanted to use an, another type of breaker or a relay and the tool allows me to go in and pick say in the case of a relay what the results would be if I let's say just kind of grabbed a uh, Schweitzer and use some, in this case, arbitrary settings to see what the, what the settings would, or what the performance would be. And all right, what other settings we need to set up here? Short-term pickup. Still missing something. Okay, so you, if you if you may have noticed what we what we had now is a a new curve being added, and this is the relay curve that we just described on a temporary basis, and it gives the ability to change each of the elements in the trip settings. So this gives us the time dial for the short term pickup, and then the delay and performance for the short term uh, rather the long term and then make modifications to it even when we have uh, not put that that particular device in the circuit yet and this can be done not only for uh, a relay we could put it in for a fuse we could put it in for a uh, generic Another another interesting capability here is to is to create a generic curve for devices that may not have uh, plots in the system. For instance, um, electric arc furnaces. We could literally create a graph for what the performance curve is for the electric arc uh, furnace, an arc furnace, or an induction furnace, and be able to coordinate against that as we've as we would any other particular load. So that we're not in in evolving sporadic unwanted uh, faults, and I don't have one of those on the top of my head, but an equal example would be um, a motor. Let's say a 100 horsepower motor. Let's say 200 horsepower motor. We could plot the TC curve and see what the result is. And we could literally take this same type of curve and plot it for any load that we want and save it. 
and then be able to invoke or arrange our trip units to uh, basically not fault on a normal normal operation of that load. Okay. Okay, then the last thing I wanted to cover, uh, just very quickly, because we'll talk about this in our final session next week, is to, uh, there is an optional module in the, in the Easy Power tool suite called Smart PDC. And what it allows us to do is to make recommendations for settings, any variables that are in a selected device, and be able to follow a certain criteria that we have set for the uh, strategy, if you will, the coordination schedule or strategy for all the devices in any of the loads. Well, these, this um, strategy is controlled by all the devices in this particular set point. So what I've done is I've selected the pull down on Smart PDC, selected the auto coordination or Smart PDC options, and it gives me this series of set points. So if we have a device that we do not want to include or hasn't been uh, completed with data, it's not going to be utilized in the coordination scheme, which brings to mind the fact that without having the proper data and correct data for each of the protective devices, there's a fair amount of ambiguity in what's going to actually happen when you get in the coordination mode. Likewise, um, and so this, this controls what you can do or uh, cannot do, and uh, you may want to consider this heartily when you go into your trying to decide how much data is required or how much data is accurate when you do coordination. Likewise for transformers, um, the rules that are used for protection and, and set points, and whether it's supervised or unsupervised, for specific lines, cables, the way to protect loads or coordinate against a specific load, including capacitors, motors, and then what kind of tolerance you can utilize based upon the fuses you're using and the variability and uh, safety margin when you're using relays or time gaps between relays and then how uh, specific and amplified the, the uh, report needs to be. So again, this is, in, this is only for uh, smart PDC or the automated uh, module for recommending protective device coordination and we will get into more detail on that ne next session. So that covers pretty much what I meant to uh, touch on this morning. Let me kind of see if we've got questions.